Great. Thank you for staying. And we're delighted to welcome our good friend Jorge Chediak, who, as you know, is the head of office and the Secretary General's envoy on South-South cooperation, who's here to brief you on the upcoming South-South Cooperation Expo. Jorge, welcome to the briefing. Hey. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Stefan, thank you very much for being here today. And as he mentioned, we're going to have this week the South-South Development Expo. This is an event that started 10 years ago, and it's undertaken on an annual basis as a space where member states, international organizations, private sector, NGOs can share what they are doing and how South-South and Triangular Cooperation are contributing to building a better world. Uh, for the first few years, it took place in headquarters cities, and in the last two years, it took place in member states, in Dubai in 2000. And 16, and last year in Antalya, in Turkey, in 2017. But this year, being the 10th anniversary, we decided to come back to New York, where the first one took place, and also in the context of the preparation of the upcoming conference that will take place in Buenos Aires in March of 2019 on South-South cooperation. So this brings an opportunity to, to bring together the diplomats who are going to be negotiating the outcome document with the practitioners uh, to, to match the reality with these political discussions. Uh, we have to say that we have over 50 institutional partners representing United Nations member states, uh, uh, private sector, regional organizations, etc. About 27 UN agencies will have uh, about 40 thematic events. We have confirmed the participation of 800 delegates for, from over 120 uh, member states, and the theme of this year is showcasing how the institutions supporting South-South cooperation are working in preparation for the upcoming conference. The uh, expo will start this Wednesday, the 27th, and in the opening session we have, we have the honor to have the confirmed participation of the Secretary General, the President of the General Assembly, the chair of the G77, and the administrator of UNDP. And they were going to have several sessions, about five per day, plus the number of side events I mentioned before. So we have very high expectations in terms of what South-South cooperation uh, represents and how it will be highlighted. In addition, we're going to launch several publications, including one I presented with you to you on the 18th of September, which is a compilation of best practices on South-South cooperation that shows how it is operating and working in practice in building a better world. And the difference is it will be launched in six UN official languages plus Portuguese. So it will be an instrument for people to find out and also to link with best practices on South-South and Triangular cooperation. We look forward to your participation. The plenary sessions will take place in conference room one and I think it will be a very interesting event for also uh, uh, guests and participants from the media. Thank you. Right, thank you very much. Carla and then uh, Masood, go ahead. Thank you very much. Um, lately, Oxfam, and this has actually appeared on the front page of the Tilly News here, um, eight people control more wealth than the majority of the world. Um, what is South, the, the organization of South-South cooperation doing to try and rectify this really dangerous imbalance in, in wealth, the whole economic distortion of it looks global? What can, can, or what can be done and what are you doing to address this? Uh, inequality is one of the very serious problems that we have in the world, and inequality within countries and among countries. Uh, that's one of the overcoming that inequality and addressing that challenge is one of the objectives of the 2030 development agenda. The contribution South-South cooperation can make is at the level of the inequality among countries is to ensure that countries of the South share the experiences that allow them to move ahead in their development path. 
After all, the development practices of other countries in similar circumstances are more relevant than the others that the North practices. So therefore, the idea is that working together by sharing, by enhancing their economic cooperation, countries of the South can grow faster and better, and therefore, in a way, closing that gap. And at the national level, every country also has to address the national issues that lead to this significant inequality. And in this context, there are also experiences in the South that can be shared among the member states. So we look forward that South-South cooperation in general, and maybe experience shared during this event, will, pro will provide new opportunities to address these inequality challenges. Yes, sir. Daily Dawn newspaper of Pakistan. I'd like to know what what were what are you basically your objectives, and will you be talking about the objectives of the South South Corporation, and will you, and what is it that you want to produce amongst the nation? What kind of amity between the nation you want to produce in order to achieve those objectives? Thank you. Well. South-South cooperation is a complement to the traditional cooperation from the north to the south. It is based on the, pro the principles of interdependence, mutual interest, mutual benefit. So our mandate is to promote more and better South-South cooperation. What our office does is a very small part of that universe. Actually, most of the universe is under of that co in cooperation goes on among member states, among international, within other international organizations among uh, private sector entities, etc. So our mandate and our, the objective we have, particularly with the events like the Expo, is to showcase how South-South cooperation is really making a difference and also to establish the opportunity for partners to meet with each other once a year and develop new partnerships. To give you an example, in the last few years, we have documented hundreds of good practices, many of which have resulted in concrete partnerships between different member states and different organizations that have changed the lives of people. So this forum is basically the annual big forum of South-South cooperation, where practitioners can meet and uh, give us guidance on what, how to move forward and also share experiences on how to do more and better South-South cooperation. So are you getting that kind of, uh, what do you call, cooperation that you uh, desire from all the countries? What are the countries which are taking uh, this one step further? Listen, there are many countries in the South that are uh, becoming more engaged with sharing those experiences. You have the case of China, India, Brazil, South Africa. They are increasingly committing resources and institutional commitment to sharing with other countries of the South. Those are the best known, but you have many others that are doing the same. Countries like Argentina, Thailand, Indonesia, eh, Nigeria, the Arab states that are incredibly generous in terms of providing assistance. So there is a lot South-South cooperation going on. The point we want to emphasize is that not only the countries that reach an at more advanced level should do South-South cooperation. South-South cooperation should involve the whole South, including the least developed countries. So one of the challenges we have and we're going to put, and it is being discussed politically at this moment, is how can we help institutionally and financially even those countries that do not have significant means to do more South-South cooperation? Because there is no country so rich and developed that they know everything, and there is no country so poor that they don't have anything to share, even their experiences. So our objective is that South-South cooperation should be a global exercise of all the countries of the South. In addition, we would like to have countries of the north and other institutions supporting South-South cooperation through what we call triangular cooperation, which is with that type of collaboration is uh, supported financially, institutionally by another partner. And we hope also that Buenos Aires will give an opportunity to further strengthen triangular cooperation to support these efforts. NHK. 
Hello. Um, on behalf of the UN Correspondents Association, also uh, welcome. Uh, I'm with Ad Franco with NHK. I see that you have a concept note, um, but I was also wondering if at the end or the beginning of the summit you will be um, adopting any kind of statement, any kind of agreements, um, and I was wondering if you're expecting any kind of commitments also. Uh, this is not a political event in the sense that there will be no uh, single communique. Probably many of the meetings and the side events will generate documents, and actually we're going to document the results of the, of the expo. And also in the third day, you have what we call the Director General Forum, where the Director General of Cooperation will bring experiences and also discuss on a more political and technical way how to advance the South-South and Triangular Cooperation Agenda. And we look forward that those contributions will be inputs for the political process of the Buenos Aires Plus 40 conference. So although there will be no formal political document, because it's not the purpose of the expos to generate such type of output, the, we are very confident that both the experiences and the discussions that will take place during the DG Forum will be very useful for the political process leading up to the, 20, to the 2019 Buenos Aires Conference. Thanks, Carla, and then we'll go. Uh, how optimistic are you about triangular cooperation? Because historically, when the North has invested in the South, the South has ended up with debts that were absolutely crippling to the economies of the South. So, uh, and I know that the IMF and the World Bank have a, a very poor reputation regarding this kind of investment. And South-South cooperation has always seemed the only way out of this. Um, so how optimistic are you that a triangular arrangement could actually benefit the, the South and not lead to the kind of indebtedness that has been catastrophic? I'm increasingly optimistic because many countries of the North and many organizations, traditional organizations, are realizing that supporting South-South cooperation is very practical and very cost-effective. Uh, to give you an example, we prepare annually the report of the Secretary General on South-South cooperation. And four years ago, we got input from 10 United Nations organizations. This year, we got input from 31 United Nations organizations that are actively engaged in South-South and Triangular Cooperation. You mentioned financial institutions. There will be a meeting of financial institutions during the, the expo and probably afterwards to coordinate better how they do South-South and Triangular Cooperation. I should not lead in itself to an increase of indebtedness because if it is supporting an initiative that needs support, financial or institutional, should not result in an increase of debt by itself. So the practice by itself should not lead to the, the consequences you mentioned. It should lead to more exchanges and also to learning from each other, which is critical within the developing world. Jorge, thank you very much for thank coming. Thank you. Thank you.